I was invited to go to Heron Island by the University of Queensland Art Museum. They'd seen a previous project that I had made, which was the replant folio, where I and another group of artists went to the Daly River region and we looked at botanical specimens and the environment and made a series of prints. So on the basis of that, I was asked to be the artist in residence over there. I was really interested. I'd spent some time on the barrier reef on various islands, but I'd never been to Heron. The Marine Research Station allocated me a space to work in, in one of the labs upstairs, which was fantastic because I could look down and see the birds flying past, see the vegetation and study the objects that I'd brought in from the various walks that I'd made around the island, collecting material for visual records. Coinciding with my residency at Heron Island was the launch of the new research station. The previous research station had burnt down in March 2007. Leading scientists were invited to give talks about their areas of research, and they included Ove Hoag Guldberg, Brad Congdon and Cathy Townsend. Just before I'd got to Heron Island, the Victorian bushfires had occurred, and when I went to Heron Island, I was looking at some of the burnt objects which had been salvaged from the wreck of the previous research station. I was able to examine some of those objects. They looked like they'd been brought up out of the ocean and they were strange burnt coral formations or ancient relics from the past. I was really inspired by the talks given by the leading scientists. Cathy Townsend showed images of turtles which had died in Moreton Bay and with the products that they'd ingested and how clear plastic bags were often mistaken for jellyfish and ended up in their gut. She also showed images of manta rays of which they've discovered a different species. Brad Congdon showed graphs showing our nesting habits of the shearwaters or mutton birds. Professor Ove Hoag Guldberg talked about coral bleaching and acidification of the oceans and showed the graphs as they overlapped and what this indicated for the barrier reef. I found the talks really informative and wanted to use the graphs as overlays within my work. So I asked permission from the scientists to do so and they sent me some of these graphs over the internet. Some of the scientific graphs were projected onto my work on the wall and drawn on and then I put the canvas or paper down on the floor and painted the graphs in. At other times, I had them printed onto the canvas in the paper and then overlaid these with washes or my own drawn marks. I also wanted to make work imaging some of the concepts I had heard discussed on the island. For instance, the freshwater lens which forms beneath sand islands where the freshwater floats on top of salt water and life is generated through this means. I made drawings of the freshwater lens in the studio and imagined how it could be conceived as a sculptural form. I worked with Urban Art Projects in Brisbane and made a maquette of this sculptural form in Australia. This was then sent over to China and it was fabricated over there in brass and bronze. Once it had been made, it was then shipped back to Urban Art Projects in Australia where it was patinaed. A patina was put over the top of the sculptural form, which adds colour to it. The freshwater lens I see as a, a vessel form. There will also be sound emanating from this form. I commissioned a sound designer, Michael Hughes, who I'd worked with previously, to make a sound work that referred to water in its many forms and also the idea of depth beneath the water, beneath the oceans. I want people to imagine that freshwater lens. I want people to be able to look underneath it and imagine this floating form, this aqueous mass of water which lies beneath our islands.
My background is as a printmaker and I decided to make a series of prints from the original drawings I'd made on Heron Island. Working from those, I made a series of background washes on other plates when I was up in Cairns working with Diane de Mouche. These plates I then took back to Brisbane and combined with the photo edge plates, commissioning Jonathan C from the Queensland College of the Arts to print them for me in various colours. Etching involves a number of technical processes in order to produce a print. To begin with, I take the drawings and I photocopied them onto transparency sheets. The transparent film with the drawing on it was put onto a photosensitive plate and exposed in the sun to light. Then in the dark room it was developed and washed out. I then took them into the print studio and painted block out around the shapes. They were then placed in the etching bath with nitric acid. I used the feather to stroke the nitric acid over the plate so that the bubbles don't form and etch too fiercely in one place. I take the plates out of the acid and wash them. I then put them into the washing room and washed off the bitumen, which was the block out. I also washed off the photo resist from the plate with methyl added spirits. I also float sheets of paper into the water baths to soften the paper for the printing process. The etching ink is pushed into the grooved lines made by the nitric acid. It's then wiped off the surface with tissue. Then it's ready to put onto the bed of the press. I take the dampened paper out of the water bath and put it between sheets of blotting paper and take the excess water off the paper. The paper is then laid over the top of the etching plate on the bed of the press. The blankets are placed over the top of the paper. The etching is wound through the press between the rollers, pushing the paper down into the recessed lines within the plate, holding the ink. I pull back the blankets and carefully peel the sheet of paper off the top of the etching plate. A second background plate is then inked up with coloured ink on the etching. I go through the same process. The plate is placed on the registration marks on the bed of the press. The dampened paper from the previous inked image is placed over the top of this etching plate. The blankets are placed over the top and I wind the print back through the press. I pull back the blankets and carefully peel the paper off the second etching plate, which is overlaid across the first etched image. I wanted the colours to be jewel-like and luminous, like the objects and images that I'd seen on Heron Island. My residency on Heron Island was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had to go and watch the turtles, seeing the hatchlings literally spilling out of the sand in the late afternoon, being shown through the marine environment by the naturalists in the field, just to see the diversity of life within this marine environment, seeing above and below and being totally transformed by the experience. <laughs>